You go. Well, me? No, me? Oh, okay. You? Hi, what, what, what this is Aaron with Kicker Tech Force, and this is... Carlos Jimenez with the Tech Force. We are here to talk about some new products for 2024. So, what are we going to talk about first, Carlos? Well, I want to talk about the made-to-fit speakers. This is very important. If you look at the boxes, we say made-to-fit. Why are we made-to-fit, Aaron? Oh, my gosh. So, a few years ago, we did a big pile of expensive research, and we discovered something really important. It doesn't matter how good the speaker sounds. If it doesn't fit, they won't buy it. Absolutely. Made to fit. So let's unbox these. So this is the bracket that comes with the six and a half. It's gonna work with the majority of the vehicles out on the road without modifications. This is the only thing you're gonna need. That's the plate for your six by nines that are gonna fit the majority of pickup trucks. You're looking at Ford pickup trucks, Toyota pickup trucks, uh, Ram. Ram, Chevy. Sure, I mean, GMC, it, why not? You'll look at it, you see what you, do, what you need, what you don't need, cut out what you don't need, you're good to go, easy. Now another important aspect of these made to fit speakers, in the old days, everybody thought that a giant magnet was a good thing. Well, in reality, again, if it doesn't fit, no one's gonna buy it, because it doesn't matter how, it sound, how good it sounds. So we're using the right size motor structure for the six by nine and six and a half, so the window still rolls down, and you can still get the door panels back on, and everything fits the way that it should. Again, if it doesn't fit, no one's gonna buy it. So we're using the right size motor structure to give you great kicker bass response and smooth detailed highs. Really cool notable thing too, Aaron, is this two and three quarter, which is a really nice little piece. You don't wanna take out a two and three quarter, or you don't wanna take out a speaker and put some, some, something smaller or something that's gonna limit the sound coming out of it. So you wanna make sure we're gonna put a speaker that fits in without any problems. But how the heck are you gonna mount that thing, Aaron? Oh, check this out. So we include these brackets, and there are brackets for Subaru, Toyota, Chrysler products, GM, whatever it is that takes a two and three quarter inch, there's an included bracket. And these are really cool. Essentially, you're sandwiching the two and three quarter inch between the two halves of the bracket. So you've got one part on the back. It's got a big old magnet that's sticking to it right now. So you've got one part of the bracket on the back, one part on the front, and then when you bolt it together, it holds the two and three quarter inch securely in that dash location. And as Carlos was saying, if you take out a two and three quarter inch and you simply put in a one inch tweeter, the customer is actually losing some cone area and some output. So it is much better to put another two and three quarter inch in that location. So again, you're gonna have three different brackets for them or three different sandwich brackets. Regular KS one inch tweeter. What makes it special? We have the, the traditional mounting brackets that come with it, so you can mount them and flush mount and angle mount, whatever you need. Again, the traditional mounting brackets that you guys are used to, but what, what is this thing? So we lovingly call this the Todd Pod because of the engineer that designed it. But this is a surface mount pod that allows you to put the one inch tweeter into the pod and then mount it to an A-pillar or even the dash. And then it simply uses this wing nut to screw it down tight and it's held in there securely. Now, we also have the ability to articulate or to aim the tweeter. There's two screws in here. You loosen those up. You can then adjust the ball mount, get it exactly where you want it, tighten it back down, put the tweeter in, and it will not move. Love this option. So you can mount it, again, wherever the heck you want and point it directly to your face so now you can actually hear it. So you're getting what you're paying for, right? That's right. All right, what else do we got, Let's Aaron? talk crossovers. Oh, yeah. What? We're noticing most of these cars now are getting a lot smaller, so we don't have room to mount these crossovers. What do we got with these uh, three-way components? So we do a lot of listening to our retail partners, and what they've been telling us is make the crossovers smaller and easier to install. So we have gone to these inline three-way crossovers that simplify the installation, make it much faster and easier, and of course, less expensive. So there are three elements. We have a tweeter high pass, we have a mid-range high pass, and then we have a low pass for the woofer. So it's really important to understand that all three elements must be installed. And the reason we want to do that is because the radio or the amplifier will see a four ohm load when all the crossovers are used correctly. And this is important because if the radio is not two ohm stable and you've got a two ohm or less load, then you can actually shut down the radio. And of course, that's a bad experience for the customer. So be sure to use all three crossover elements and it'll sound fantastic. Hey, let's talk about tweeter protection. IPC, that's the illuminated protection circuit. So in some of our install, excuse me, some of our crossovers, we actually use a little light bulb. And that light bulb's job is to protect the tweeter from direct current or clipping or distortion. 
So if you turn the volume up too high and you distort the amplifier, that little light bulb starts to flash. So if it's flashing, that's actually bad. So it, maybe it's fun to watch, but it's actually bad because it's having to protect the tweeter. So that is part of the bigger crossover. But if you want to do a smaller inline safe crossover that's easier to install, we use what's called a thermistor, which is a heat activated resistor. And its job is the same as the IPC, but when it gets hot, it just reduces the power to the tweeter, cutting down the volume temporarily. When it cools off, it goes back to full volume. So it's still protecting the tweeter, and it's doing it in a very non-intrusive way.